What's up everybody? Bulldog here with Stone Coat Countertops. What we're going to do today is we're going to do a clear coat on top of this beautiful table that we've already poured. If you want to see how to make this table, go back and look at the videos on, on, on our other Stone Coat uh, projects and you'll see exactly how we make these unbelievable tops. But the focus of today's video is exactly how to mix the product correctly, um, how to prep it for the next coat. I put a flood coat, a second flood coat, on top, on top of my decorative coat um, for a couple simple reasons. Number one, I want a little bit more um, protection and I want a little bit more thickness on my top. And that's what a second coat does. It also, when, when you put in the paints and the pigments and the color uh, effects, you're gonna have um, a little bit of imperfections because of all that artistic stuff that we did. And you'll, you, you know, you'll feel little highs and lows here and there, depending on how late you did those decorative uh, elements in the top. If it started gelling at all, you, it may not self-level perfectly. When we put just a clear on top, all we're doing is putting it on, leveling it, and walking away. And so it has so much time to level. It protects all your colors. There's nothing else in the top but your um, part A and part B. I'm not putting any other paints or anything like that. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to mix um, and, and what tools you need to do that and how to just put a clear coat on. Before we do that, we need to scuff our top. Um, what I like to use is a mar maroon scotch Brite. It's equivalent to about a 220 grit pad. And I like this because it's fast, but it just takes some of the shine away to create tooth and a mechanical bond for our second coat to adhere. Um, after you, after you scotch Brite the entire surface, which I've already done, you're gonna wipe that dust off and then you're gonna mix your material. So I'm gonna show you exactly how I mix. I got part A, part B, and I got a two quart graduated mixing container. Um, you gotta make sure that you use a container that is made for measuring. You don't wanna just guess a 50-50 mix. You wanna get it dead on. And that's important because everything will cure just great when you do that. You also wanna do it in a warm environment. You don't wanna do this in a really cold garage. If you're in a garage, you need to warm it up with some heaters. Get it nice and warm in there. I like to work between 65 and 75 degrees is really good for me. Now that we got our container, uh, we start with part B, the hardener. It's a less uh, viscosity material. It's more, it's more runny than our part A. So I, I put it in first and then we put part A on top of it. So we're gonna do uh, part B, the hardener. And I'm gonna do, yesterday I found out that this whole top only required two quarts. So I'm gonna do one quart of part uh, B, one quart of part A. So I'm gonna look, I like to look in the cup at the measurement instead of putting it here and trying to follow it up, I just have better luck looking right in there. And I'm gonna fill this up. Now my material is nice and warm. Um, you wanna work with uh, material that hasn't been sitting out in the cold. You wanna work, work with warm material. Just mixes easier. Okay, so there's one quart of part B and we're gonna go to one quart of part A. If you're doing a big project, I suggest starting with uh, with with just you know a couple quarts at a time. If you try to do a whole gallon at a time of material, you got to work really fast. And so I don't want you to get discouraged. Um, as you get more comfortable with the material, big batches are no problem. But learn how to use the material, get comfortable with it, make some samples, and then move on to your big big projects. All right, there we go. So I'm, I'm measured really accurately. And now instead of using a stir stick and sitting here for 10 minutes at a time and getting carpal tunnel, we like to go on to our Jiffy type mixer. But the important thing when you use a Jiffy type mixer is you need to slow down the drill and rub the sides and the bottom of the container. Um, I've used this over and over so it's got lots of funky drips on it and I think that helps mix it better. So I use it over and over and over and that's just fine but then I'll show you what you gotta do when you pour the material out. So let's go ahead and mix this. I'm pulling the trigger full speed. And that's no problem, right at first it turns a little bit milky and then it'll clear right up as the two parts start to mix. So I'm gonna get that really, really going. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slow it down and start to rub the sides and the bottom of my container. You want to make sure you use a new container when you're doing this 
so that you don't get chunks of something that's left over in the in the uh, old bucket and, and have it mix in with your product. You get real accurate measurements when you're using a new container. I get these uh, containers at my local hardware store, or even Walmart. I think Walmart carries them cheaper than anywhere else. So find your uh, find your mixer uh, mixing buckets. I don't need to sell them to you, but I will put a package together for somebody who doesn't want to go to the store and ship it all to you. You want to make sure you get them mixed really well. You don't need to overdo it, but you'll see about how long I take. But you'll be able to look in the, in the material and see that it's all the same color, and that's really important. This material dries just so clear. It dries just crystal clear, so it's, it's fun to work with, but just mix it well. Make sure it's two equal parts, one to one, and, uh, and make sure they're mixed well, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and go to the edges one more time. When I get to the top, I don't pull that trigger full speed, so I don't spray the material everywhere. Okay, now I'm gonna bring that drill up a little bit. Just go nice and slow, just to get the excess material off my uh, off my mixing paddle. Okay, now we're gonna pour this. So these are the brushes that I like to use. It's a Wooster Shortcut. I get this at Home Depot. It's a nylon bristle brush. When you open it, you want to make sure that you pull any excess uh, or any loose bristles off which these don't shed too bad but they will um, and so just make sure you pull on it get it clean and then these are throw away you know you're only going to use it once and then you're going to throw it away so um, that's the little brush I like the little rubber handle on it it's easy to do the the effects so, that I like to do square notch trowel 1 8 by 1 8 square notch that's the kind of trowel that I like to use to spread the material I use this over and over so it's got all, all kinds of goo and stuff on it, but when I set it down, I set it so the drips run away from the notches, and then you won't, you'll be able to use these for a long time. You don't want to leave the material sitting in your bucket for a long time. It starts to generate heat, and it'll cure much quicker than if you get it out on your top. Um, so I do have a stir stick in mind, and I'll show you, or in hand, I'll show you what I do. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pour all my material right down the center of my project and I like to keep it in like a nice big bead I don't uh, I don't put an S all over the place and I'll show you why I'm gonna take my stir stick and I'm gonna scrape all the excess material that's clinging onto the sides and bottom and I'm gonna put it right into the big mass of material that's here on my on my table and what I'm going to do after I put it in there is I'm going to remix this material right on the surface because some of the stuff that I'm scraping off will not have been mixed very, very well. And so as I remix it, it'll ensure that I don't get sticky spots in my top. If you don't mix your material well and you have a spot that doesn't seem to cure like the rest of the spots on your project, that's why. It's because it wasn't mixed very well. It's easy to mix this right if you follow what I'm showing you here, but don't take a shortcut here. You've got to mix it well. I don't get those sticky spots at all, but I did a couple of times because I didn't mix it right when I was learning. Okay, so here's where I poured. I scraped the bucket. I'm going to take my trowel, and I'm just going to go back and forth through that section. I'm not pushing hard at all. I'm just, just letting the trowel, the trowel is almost lubricated by, by this material. So I'm not pushing, I'm just moving the material. And that right there is plenty for what I just poured on that top. So now I got my material right here in the center and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna work the material out towards the edges. And as I do that, I won't let it roll over the edge until I'm ready, but I'll get a little bead of material set all the way around the perimeter and then I'll do I'll I'll, I'll take it over
drips that are starting to happen over the edges and you want to make sure to brush those drips out and help that material coat your edge. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm coating my edges with the brush. I'm also touching that corner and the lip of where the edge and the top meet to make sure that all that is coated. You want to make sure you don't do it in some kind of a geometric pattern. You want to go randomly. And all I'm doing now is I'm erasing those lines so that those will not show up in my surface. And this material itself levels so well, chopping it doesn't affect it, especially when you do it early on in the floor like we are now. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed the video. As you can see, after you do that second coat, this material just wants to level really, really flat. It's just brand new uh, uh, put on, and as it starts to cure, it will continue to level and level until it's just like a sheet of glass on there. So take your time, uh, mix your material well, use the products here that I showed you, and enjoy the results. Uh, it just turns out nice. Um, visit our website at stonecoatcountertops.com to see more videos and also to order the material. You'll find that this material for doing your own projects is extremely economical and you could get really high dollar looks on a budget price. Enjoy and you guys have a great day.